Since Cain and Abel, relationships between brothers have been tested by competition and sometimes ruined by hostilities. But for Vladimir Klitschko, nothing is more treasured than the bond with his older brother, Vitaly. I can describe it as a gift from my parents. All of the time when I see him, I say, thank you very much for the gift in my life. They ask, what? What are you talking about? I'm talking about Vitaly. Born in Russia and raised in the Ukraine, both their parents were. The mother as a school teacher and the father as a colonel in the Air Force. Uh, my brother was one half years old. Uh, our mom go to work and tell me, you as a boss in home and uh, you care about your brother, take care about Vladimir, the small one. And yeah, and after that, I was for him, mom and pop. The siblings excelled in a variety of combat arts, winning numerous awards, including an Olympic gold medal for Vladimir. Yet the two brothers never became rivals in the ring. We promised our mother never, never fight. Never fight in the ring. We will never go through that. She will never see it. And it was a promise. They successfully entered the pro ranks, initially winning 74 out of 76 fights, almost all by knockout. But some believe they were overrated, partially because of their ethnicity. I think it's been unfair in a lot of ways that a lot of people have placed this great white hope image on the Klitschko brothers, which they themselves don't like. They're just two brothers who got into boxing as two kids and they're trying to make the best out of the talent they have and this opportunity they have right now. Cheering each other on, they've compiled a 10 and four record in title fights. Twice they've avenged each other's loss and have grown to think of themselves as two parts of the same fighter. We fight together in the ring. Split our wins together and we split our losses together too. Chris Bird beat me and the next uh, defense, Vladimir beat Chris Bird to take the belt uh, back to family. It's exactly the same story against Corey Sanders. Corey Sanders beat my brother, but uh, in the next fight I beat Corey Sanders. The most devastating loss was Vladimir's recent meltdown against Lehman Brewster. Dominating the fight, Vladimir was suddenly and inexplicably overcome by exhaustion. I spend a lot of time in, 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 in boxing, I spend a lot of time in sports, and I, and, I, and I really was, it was a big upset to me also. How I can get tired in second round? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what was that. I, I, I still, I still have those questions. While tonight may answer some questions, a loss here would be a crushing blow to the brothers' childhood dreams of sharing the heavyweight title. Our dream and our goal with Vitali is to be champions in the same time, and that's why it's not just about me. This is about us. Ask Vitaly Klitschko and he'll tell you that it's tougher watching baby brother Vladimir fight than it is to fight himself. Given the fact that Vladimir's career is on the line tonight, you can only imagine how much pressure both Klitschkos are feeling right now. Back here with my uh, partner Al Bernstein. What do you think, Al? Is tonight's fight a must-win situation for Vladimir? Well, you can make the case, but since boxers are almost as good as reinventing themselves as politicians and entertainers, uh, I'm not really going to say that. I'm usually reticent to say that about any fighter, that this is their last chance for success. In this case, it might be true, though. It's been almost two years since we saw a really complete performance from Klitschko. And even in the rounds in which he dominated Lehman Brewster, he looked awkward and vulnerable at times. Where is the more fluid and confident Klitschko of several years ago? Perhaps attention to detail, conditioning, and strategy has brought him back for this match. Vladimir Klitschko's jab is punishing. It can hurt Williamson and it will set up the right. The pace he set should be one that allows him to go deep into the fight if necessary. He's thought of as a right-handed puncher, but his left hook is excellent. Now he can surprise Williamson with this punch as he did Jamil McCline. It's almost as powerful as his right hand and Williamson can be hit with this punch. Part of Devar Williamson's strategy of surviving the early rounds is to keep his hands up. 
Another part is to maul or grab if he has to on the inside, do anything to get to the middle round. And Klitschko can be hit with the uppercut when he grapples on the inside. Williamson does have a good uppercut. He's used it in virtually all of his fights, and it obviously lands with authority. Biggest fight in the career of 36-year-old Devaro Williamson, who turned pro just four years ago. Not an easy road. His mother battled drug addiction. He lived in six foster homes as a child while his father was in jail. Six elementary schools, but he did not use that as a crutch. A 96 U.S. Olympic alternate, a three-time U.S. amateur champion, and in 98 received a master's degree in administrative services from Northern Michigan University. So no questioning the man's resolve. 2-0 since a dreadful first round knockout loss to Joe Macy off a majority decision over tough Cuban Southpaw Eliezer Castillo. But the major concern has to be his chin. How could it not be, Al, in light of the debacle with uh, Macy? Well, he admitted that for that fight, he probably was overcome by the moment. It was his biggest moment in boxing. This is his second chance, he said, to make a first impression. He hopes to overcome that tonight. A one-time stand-up comic who opened for Chris Tucker, former high school and college quarterback, also a mascot and cheerleader, who once tried out for the Indianapolis Colts. You get the feeling this is a guy who makes every minute count. As uh, you pointed out, very appreciative of this second opportunity. There he is, the Varel Touch of Sleep Williamson. There was a time when Vladimir Klitschko was considered the best of the Klitschko brothers, but ever since the Corey Sanders fight, a lot of question marks. His chin, his heart, his conditioning. Does he have what it takes? His first trip to the ring since the forgettable loss to Lehman Brewster. Klitschko, a heavy favorite, and as you can hear, the fan favorite. But given the recent rash of upsets, Al, is there cause for concern? I think there is for one simple reason. He's facing a man in Devar Williamson who has considerable power. And let's be honest about Vladimir Klitschko. He is two years removed from a really, really good performance. So he has to prove to the boxing world and the fans that he is capable of fighting like he did a couple of years ago when, as you pointed out, he looked like the heir apparent to the throne in the heavyweight division. As he makes his way through the ropes, Vladimir Klitschko admitting he's at the bottom of the division. Still, his trainer, Hall of Famer, Emmanuel Stewart, insists Vladimir can be as good as the best heavyweight he ever trained Lennox Lewis. And he showed evidence of that a couple of years ago. This is a superb athlete who, if he can harness hey, that and fight well over the course of entire fights, he can do it. And you got a glimpse in the background of his older brother Vitali in there to lend support. Let's size him up right now as we check out the tail of the tape. And we wonder, will age be a factor? At 36, Williamson, eight years older than Klitschko. Three and a half inch height advantage for the nearly 6'7 Klitschko, and a three inch edge in reach as well. For Vladimir, at yesterday's weigh in, Klitschko, one pound shy of his career heaviest, has 26 pounds on Williamson. And the key unified rules for this non title fight no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fighters rule to no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, getting ready for our main event, Vladimir Klitschko versus Devaro Williamson. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the new Roman Plaza Amphitheater here at the home of champions, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, as we present the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with K2 Promotions, Warriors Boxing Promotions, Caesars Palace, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is John Bailey, Commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, Skip Avancino, Joe W. Brown, and Dr. Flip Homansky with the Executive Director Mark Ratner. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. William Berliner, Dr. Al Cabana, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, we have Jane Broadfoot and James Cavan. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Chuck Jumpa. Also from Las Vegas, we have Jerry Roth. And from Carson City, Nevada, Doug Tucker. And our third man in the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, we have Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing and a heavyweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's showtime. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing navy blue trunks with silver trim, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. He weighed in at 218 pounds. His record stands at 20 wins, two losses, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former NABF heavyweight champion, currently ranked number Number 10 in the world by the WBC, introducing Davero, Touch of Sleep, Williamson. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner in this 10-round heavyweight special attraction, wearing red trunks with gold trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Kiev, Ukraine. He weighed in at 244 pounds. His record stands at 42 wins, three losses, with 39 big wins coming by way of knockout number six in the world by the WBO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBO heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Vladimir Klitschko. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay and Nady, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing schedule. One second, let's go. Final come, sec come center. Do you have any questions? Obey my commands. Both your uh, trunks look just fine. Touch gloves now, good luck, let's go to work. A fight that features two powerful sluggers with vulnerable chins, which usually makes for interesting fights. Klitschko has a doctorate in sports science. Williamson has mentioned a master, so both should be smart enough to know that this is all about both highly motivated even desperate and let me tell you Vladimir Klitschko kept staring at Devaro Williamson from the moment he got oh, in the fight. ring trying to doing his best Sonny listen impression and Williamson never looked at him even during the instructions I think he feels he can intimidate Williamson early we'll see we should point out we uh, uh, picked up that Klitschko had a nosebleed in the dressing room they were working on it all the way up to the ring walk we'll see if that uh, impacts here. Let's go once the future of the division looks to dig out from the rubble of two losses in his last four fights most notably the embarrassing defeat to Lehman Brewster. Williamson realizes if he is to be taken seriously it has to begin here. Now DeVar Williamson isn't by nature a boxer but he will 
He's a boxer puncher, but he will move in these first couple of rounds. He hopes it will go four and two rounds to try and get through these early rounds where he thinks, and everyone, of course, these days thinks Klitschko will not do well in the middle rounds. And make no mistake, Williamson has some power. He can punch. Klitschko normally prefers to fight at a slow, relaxed, deliberate pace. Will Williamson set a fast pace and look to test Klitschko's athletic skills? Will Klitschko pick up his pace and intensify his attack? Emmanuel Stewart told us they expect Williamson to bring a lot of movement, so they have changed Klitschko's style to be more aggressive. And that's what Williamson is doing here in round one. He is boxing, he is moving. He, he doesn't want to get hit by Klitschko um, early on. Williamson says he'll outthink Dr. Klitschko. Said he's not going to go right after him. Good left hook by Williamson. He's counter punching fairly well early in this bout. And he's capable of it, though it's not his major stock in trade. You know, Williamson was one of the most decorated amateur boxers ever for the United States. A three time champion, but never made it to the Olympics. Would have fought Vladimir in the 1996 Olympics had he won in the trials, but lost. Vladimir Klitschko uh, winning the gold medal in those Olympics at super heavyweight. Williamson uh, looking to be tactical, looking to trick uh, Klitschko best he can. A fight in which Williamson is faced with an interesting dilemma. Which Klitschko will he see? He prepared for a couple of different Vladimirs, saying he's ready for the best Vladimir Klitschko that he's seen in the past. In the old days, before they had the 24-second uh, clock in the pros and uh, also the shot clock in, uh, in basketball and college basketball, you could buy time early in the match with the four-corner offense, etc. Think of this as Williamson's four-corner offense. He just wants to get this fight in the fourth or fifth round. He's becoming Dean Smith in the early in this fight. I was fight. just going to say, Dean Smith. Little trickle of blood from the left eye of Vladimir Klitschko. I'm not sure if that's as a result of heads coming together. I didn't see it or a punch. Fighting a good fight. No way, it's a little small space. The most important thing, keep the pressure on him and keep fending him a lot. He rounds at this pace. Only Muhammad Aki go this pace, so he's going to slow down. And then start shooting with the right hand to the body sometimes, okay? And the other night you fight a good fight, the only danger when you got a guy that's running, 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 then when he stops and punches, sometimes you're not expecting a punch, and that's why you can get caught. But keep putting the pressure on, do a lot of fading, let him keep running. He cannot run much more than one more round, okay? So you find a good patient fight. And sometimes shoot the right hand to the body. Just a little bit, a little right hand to the body. Eventually, after all exchanges, shoot the jab after you finish up, okay? It's a good fight. You gotta love Emmanuel Stewart. <laughs> He's not Muhammad Ali. He can't keep up this pace. Referring to Devaro Williamson. Let's see if he does uh, listen to Emmanuel Stewart and shoot that short compact right like he said he'd like, like him to. Now there's the hook Stop. from Klitschko. Let him go. Uh, he's thought of as a right-handed puncher, but I think if there's a punch that will land most effectively against uh, Williamson, and Joe Macy showed that, it's the left hook. And uh, Klitschko has a pretty good one, uh, even though the right hand is his most notable knockout weapon. They've been working on cutting off the ring, uh, Emmanuel Stewart and Klitschko, knowing that Williamson might give them this movement. And there you see Klitschko doing just that. There's the jab by Williamson, who continues to move around and up on his toes. Does a little dance. So you might say, that, you know, boy, Williamson's going to give away a lot of rounds here if he keeps doing this. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if he gives away four rounds. He's, he's hoping that he can get Klitschko into middle rounds, and it'll be a replay of the Brewster fight. And, um, uh, and also the Ross Purity fight from years ago when Klitschko was ahead and got knocked out a, a later. Williamson, a 6'3", 36-year-old, four-year pro. He's done a pretty good job. Oh, here comes Klitschko. Done a pretty good job of dispelling the myth. He's too old and too small for the division. Stop, stop. 
Williamson just yeah, bodily well, takes go. Klitschko let to the ropes. Go. Well, you know. Let him go I say let him go. He's going to have to hold Watch. on and grab and maul, and that's what he did when he got hit with that right hand. That's what Emmanuel Stewart wanted to see. We'll see if Klitschko unleashes the right again. Looks like he's trying to set it up with the jab. And a very effective jab right there. It got through the defense. He, his jab when he throws it well is like George Foreman's. It's a weapon as a heavyweight. And his is that. It's not just a probing jab. It's a weapon indeed. There it is again. It snaps Williamson's head back. Under 30 seconds left in round two. Very effective jab here being displayed by Klitschko. You know, Williamson, if he used his jab a little bit, would nullify that. And there, see, there's the Williamson jab. You know, he's not committing himself that much by throwing the jab. He doesn't want to commit himself, Williamson, by throwing power punches, but the jab, he could get away with. Now, Klitschko attempts the right, but it came up short. That went into the gloves of Williamson. Stop, stop. And they tangle again at the bell. Nice round. Listen to me. You ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. You hear me? Yeah. You're back standing straight up, man. You want to compete at this level, man. You got to do the right thing. You hear me, see? Yeah. Snap out of it. You hear me? Get low, man. This guy's breathing out of his mouth already. Get low and coil up and do what you're supposed to do. You hear me? Yep. No more stupid mistakes. You're standing straight up and he's coming at you. Smooth side to side. You understand? Yep. Let's get it together. Vladimir Klitschko in that last round using the jab to set up the straight right hand and that one gets there and Williamson has to fight back to make sure he doesn't get nailed with another punch. From Williamson's viewpoint, the jab and the straight right, very, very effective. George Durbin, interestingly, in the corner of Williamson, they didn't want him standing straight up. They wanted him moving, but getting low, uh, where where Klitschko wouldn't hit him with the jab and the straight right hand so much. It is round three, scheduled for ten. Non-title heavyweight affair. See, different posture by by William Williamson. They don't want him standing so upright. Klitschko doesn't have an uppercut to speak of. But he keeps pumping that jab. Let's go, so, uh, rather, Williamson saw an opening, but couldn't connect with the right. Let's go, his mouth wide open, if that means anything. Nobody throwing anything now. Finally, a big right hand that Stop, landed oh by Vladimir Klitschko. And if, if um, Williamson doesn't exactly look like Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali and uh, Jimmy Ellis, and you can name the, the good boxers, it's because he isn't. This is not something he does, but he's doing it for this fight. And that's why his movement looks labored, but it's keeping him in the fight in, in this third round. Now, is is Klitschko going to fade as we get into middle rounds? I don't know, especially if there's no pressure put on him, but it's the one chance Williamson thinks he can give himself. And that's why you're looking at a guy that doesn't look like he's very good at this style. It's, he's being just barely good enough to hang in there. Klitschko with a right hand right off the top of Williamson's head. Yeah, DeVaro looking very mechanical. He's back to being uh, upright. And Klitschko just patiently waiting for the opening. Fans impatient. They want to see more action. They want this to be a heavyweight shootout. So with Klitschko in a way, although he doesn't want to take punches. And make no mistake, Williamson does have some pop. Yeah, that's why Vladimir Klitschko isn't rushing in, because Williamson can punch. 56 of the 62 uh, fights these fighters have been involved in have ended in knockout. So while we're seeing a very slow pace over three rounds, don't expect uh, this to go the full distance. I doubt that it will. 
Williamson 20 and 2 with 17 knockouts. Klitschko 42 and 3 with 39 KOs. But Williamson's chin very much in question. Now he has taken a couple of good right hands, and there was a hook from Klitschko. Stop! Stop! But don't muscle, Klitschko's don't not muscle, been able to wrestle. follow up on Box. those punches. Time! Thank you. A man who has provided uh, all kinds of excitement at this venue, Thomas Hearns, who established himself as one of the greats in boxing history in the 80s, headlined many big fights here at Caesars. Bouts with uh, Hagler, Leonard, Duran became classics. Part of a, a generation of middleweights, junior middleweights, uh, and welterweights that we may not see again for a long, long time. Earlier tonight, the hitman's son, Ronald, the victorious, to make it 4 and 0. Oh. Find a very intelligent fight. Good fight. The most important punch is the left jab. And then you start adding more and more and more to it. More right hands to the body okay, here. Guys, okay. Let's go. Okay. All right, let's go. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart, he's happy. And he's correct. The jab is the most important punch for him because once he keeps, if he keeps throwing it, which Williamson is long and to do it, will set up the right hands and uh, those rights to the body and ultimately also maybe a left hook that will land. You know, it's a misnomer for people to think Klitschko hasn't fought good heavyweights. He dominated Chris Bird, who, of course, has one of the championships and beat him. He beat Jamil McCline. He beat Derek Jefferson. He beat both of them when he could still fight a little bit. He beat Monty Barrett. He's beaten the people he's supposed to be. Oh, oh, my. But he's down. Wow. A straight right hand. Klitschko down. Six. Seven. You okay? Eight. Come he got on. up fast. Right. It's a flash right. knockdown. He's just right. stunned out of nowhere. And now a con confident Williamson goes back to it. But stop, stop, Williamson stop, stop. better be careful. If he rushes in, he can get nailed with something big. Yeah, you can't be too cocky here. Uh-oh. Don't be throwing those wild left hooks, Duvall. Now, all of a sudden, a fight breaks out. Yeah. Well, maybe he only needed to get to round three, not round five, as I suggested. Oh, it's... Wild now as stop, they continue stop. to brawl with a minute 40 and counting in round Box. four. Stunningly, Vladimir Klitschko stop, stop. No, 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 went no, no. down. And a lot of time left in this round, although he didn't seem really hurt, just stunned. No. You can't grab him like that, all right? But, but certainly a less confident Vladimir Klitschko Stop. and a more confident Williamson who's coming short. in and Box. getting some shots off. No, Cutter on no, the left no, no, eye no. of Klitschko, you some blood. Hold him Mentioned it uh, a little bit earlier. Box. Klitschko down for uh, the third time in his career here in round four. And then a right hand by Klitschko. And now Williamson just trying to hold on. Dangerous time for Williamson. Here comes Klitschko on the attack. Stop! Stop! That knockdown may have emboldened Devar Williamson way too much. He still has to be very careful. 40 seconds no, no, left no, in the no, fourth. No, no, no. no spinning. Let's go trying for the knockout here. Stop! Stop! Blood around his left eye. So all of a sudden, things have become a little dramatic here. At the very least, DeVar Williamson is in this fight. Now, it's interesting. He had that knockdown and won the first part of the round, but has been beaten in the second part of the round to a great extent. And he nailed Klitschko with another right hand. Back comes Klitschko with a right and a left counter by Williamson at the bell. Take it easy. Don't get excited. You're getting too excited. You understand? Yeah. Just get back to your basic costume. You, you didn't 
get hit with a normal right hand. You was throwing a punch, you got caught off balance. So just take it easy and don't panic. Just work your jab now, okay? Get back to working your jab and take your time, okay? Fight a very patient. Take it. Here's how Devaro Williamson was able to create a knockdown. Uh, Klitschko was made himself lower than he normally does, not fighting as straight up. You see, he leaned in. And that is a way, by the way, that he got nailed by Lehman Brewster in their fight. He will oftentimes make himself smaller instead of fighting tall. It's one of the great, great attributes of Lennox Lewis. He never fought small. And that's what, what uh, Stewart really wants uh, Klitschko to do. But that time he did. Jacob Stitch Duran going to work in the Klitschko corner on that left eye. Yeah, Klitschko keeping his left hand extremely low most of the time. And as you point out, that's what cost him. In the fight with Brewster. You're going to laugh at me for saying this. Williamson has created, put a seed of doubt in Klitschko's mind. I say for the next two rounds, if I'm DeVar Williamson, I fight those exactly as I fought the first two and a half and see if I can get him into the sixth or seventh and then go after him. No reason for DeVar Williamson to go after Klitschko right now, other than to entertain us, which would be fun. <laughs> and this crowd. He waited for Klitschko to make a mistake. He made one and he got him down. Maybe a mistake like that in a couple of rounds could create a better knockdown for Williamson. We don't know. As you saw as the crowd begins to blow now, as not much uh, happens, you saw the press row scoring. Two guys had uh, Klitschko ahead, one even. I have Klitschko 39-37 ahead in this fight. I made the round a 10-9 round because Klitschko came back and dominated so much. And some may have put that at 10-8 for Williamson yeah. with the knockdown. As well they could have. Things have slowed considerably here in round five after an action, uh, all action round four. And what is Klitschko not doing? That. He's not throwing yeah. the jab. And, and Stewart really wants that punch. And it's the punch that would control this fight completely for him. But you know what, Al? It, it's early. But I'm just not seeing a guy, as Klitschko gets caught there, I'm just not seeing a guy who, who should represent the future of the heavyweight division, at least not yet. It is not a, as complete a, a performance as they would like, certainly. And that's been his problem in the recent fight. Just sort of fights in, in bursts and stretches. He's not the same person he was a couple of years ago when he looked for all the world like he's putting everything together. Ever since that Sanders fight, it's not been the same. Again, you know, the jab being used more by Klitschko, and Aaron mixes in the hook. He can control this fight with that jab. But then all of a sudden, he stops doing it. Yeah, and sometimes he'll try an odd thing like an overhand right as a lead, and that's when he got clipped with the right hand by Williamson. Still has that left hand really low, does Klitschko. Now he brings it up. Klitschko's also trying to lean in a little bit more, again, making himself a lower target. That's what happens later in the fight. Time, time, time. Oh, the blood now coming down. The face of Klitschko. And Margaret Goodman stepping in, the doctor. They may have clashed heads toward the end of that yes, round. I think they did. That's what happened. That's a big one. Yeah, you can't oh, handle that. Man. Oh, you can handle it. Come on. No, no, no. No, that's... Yeah, let's go. What the... That's a good one. Here we go. Let me get that. Where's the towel? Give me a towel. 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 A dry towel. Dry towel. I'm ready. There we go. It's a dry there towel. There we go. We got it. Give me a dry towel. There we go. Clean them up. We'll do it. Some awkward action in the last round there. And I'm going to stop the fight. No, I have to create this fight. We're going, to the, we're going to the scorecards. Okay, right we, you heard Jane 80 say we're going to the scorecards based upon that clash of heads. It's over, Al. It's over. Yeah, after the end of four, they go to the scorecards. You hear the uh, crowd reaction. The doctor makes the determination. It is a nasty cut, very deep, and the blood is going into the eye.
Mr. Blood had the uh, potential on? of entering I'm the eye. You see, just going down the bridge of the nose there. Also, they didn't think they could stop it. Yep. So Dr. Margaret Goodman there makes uh, the recommendation. Jay Nady abides, and uh, this fight is over here after what was that? Five rounds. Mm -hmm. So they have to go to the scorecards after four. So five rounds uh, were complete. And uh, they will go to the cards, and this one is history. It ends uh, unceremoniously, unfortunately, with a cut on a clash. No, no question that was a clash of heads, absolutely none. And the sad thing for Vitaly, or for, excuse me, for Vladimir Klitschko is that he didn't have the chance to really answer all the questions people had about him. A fight in which he's knocked down once, may well get the decision. We would expect he might, might, but nevertheless, uh, a fight in which he didn't get a chance to put his stamp on this against a man who had been knocked out in one round by Joe Macy, who later was really manhandled by Giroff, even in a fight yep. Macy won. So a, a very incomplete night. Yeah, very much in this fight, and uh, not one that the Klitschko's are going to be happy with, no matter what. No, it was sort of an awkward, inconsistent uh, approach by v Vladimir Klitschko. Jim Gray is with the uh, ringside physician, Dr. Margaret Goodman. Jim. All right. Steve, thank you. Dr. Margaret Goodman is here. She's reluctant to talk on camera, but she did just tell me that uh, she stopped the fight because it was down to the bone on the forehead of Klitschko, and she recommended to Jane Nady that the fight be stopped. So she stopped the fight. Is that basically what you were just telling me, Dr. Goodman? Yes. And the cut went below the level of the brow down to where one of the nerves goes to control part of the pupil. So we wanted to stop. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. That's the story. Steve will now wait for the decision from Jimmy Lennon. Kind of a, a reminiscent of the first Corrales Casamayor yes, fight thinking. and her explanation, Dr. Goodman's explanation, very good and succinct as it was then. This is where the clash of heads came, right at the end of the round, toward the end of the round. Uh, yeah, uh, very obvious. Not, neither man really made it happen. Klitschko came in, Williamson came with the right hand. It was not intentional. But nevertheless, it occurred, and the heads blasted together, and it created just a terrible, terrible cut. It's one of those bad breaks in boxing, and it's this case especially bad break because it left us with an inconclusive feeling about this fight and about Vladimir Klitschko in general. And certainly, Devaro Williamson would say it took away, uh, could have taken away, we don't know yet, could have taken away Devaro Williamson's chance for a victory. We'll see, though. We don't know yet because we haven't gotten to the scorecards. Well, that blood just started gushing down after that last uh, clash. And remember, you know, that could have easily been a two-point round, the knockdown round for Devaro Williamson. Easily could have been. All right, so we'll see uh, how it all comes out as we send it up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number five. Vladimir Klitschko is a recipient of an unintentional headbutt. A referee in charge, Jay Nady, stops the contest upon advice of the ringside physician. According to unified rules, we then go to the scorecard since the fight went more than four rounds. And after five rounds of action, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Chuck Jompa scores the bout 49 to 46 in favor of Vladimir Klitschko. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Doug Tucker sees the bout 48 to 47 in favor of Devero Williamson. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Jerry Roth scores the bout 49 to 46 in favor of the split technical decision winner. Vladimir Klitschko. Well, some mixed uh, reaction from the crowd here, as uh, well, nobody's ever happy when a fight ends in this fashion. But then a split technical decision goes the way of Vladimir Klitschko, and uh, 
you know what he, what can you say there's really not a much uh, to celebrate right now and I know you want to get some comments in Al uh, but uh, we'll get to that uh, momentarily let's go to Jim Gray all right thank you very much Steve Vladimir first of all how is your forehead um, so I want to say thanks for the very Williamson he's in great shape he's a tough fighter and I built my fight with the left jab and uh, it was not easy to fight with him how's your also, forehead how's your forehead <laughs> and on the end of the round I really feel that I taken care on his left and his right hand and uh, yeah, it was head but but I would like to continue to fight and uh, I understand that some some people and boxing fans they want to see uh, um, with the full distance how it's gonna be and so you know the results and how it, how it looks like did you feel as though you were winning this fight I feel pretty confident and I feel that I winning the fight in the second round uh, the barrel hit me with the right hand was pretty good but anyway I was clear and I was ready to fight so but I feel confident and I feel that they're winning every round tell me what happened here in the fourth round when you were knocked down I was out of balance and of course of course he cut me with the right hand but it was more out of balance so but anyway it was clear clear right hand and they have to admit it Vladimir how was your conditioning tonight had this fight continued to go would you have been able to do better than you did against Brewster and was your conditioning better for this fight I mean as you see it was five rounds and uh, <laughs> it's again of the fifth round the fight was coming to the end with another results when uh, um, uh, like it was in the last fight in April but I feel pretty good and my condition is good and I think that the fight was pretty fast also if this was a fight to regain your confidence did you accomplish that I think I never lost my confidence even I lost two fights in a row almost in a row against Corey Sanders and against the, the and against Brewster and uh, I, I didn't lost my confidence and pretty confident let me bring in Manny Stewart for his assessment because you've got a keen eye for this Manny what's your assessment before I thought we... it was a good performance. It's very, very difficult to fight anyone who's steadily running away. Every time he makes a motion to get into the fight zone, the Vera was very smart. He was running out of the fight zone. So it's very difficult to do anything when everything you do, you know the guy's going to be running back, which was very smart. He was trying to wait him out. So it was really very difficult to really evaluate a person off of this. But I was satisfied with the stamina. But aren't you concerned with what you've seen here in the ring tonight? You said before the fight that you think that this guy is better than Lennox Lewis if he could put it together and he certainly isn't showing anything like that Manny well I would say to go to the knockdown the knockdown was mainly off balance knockdown I don't care if I was in the other corner I would have to say that the knockdown Take a look was, at it, he let him throw a right hand and got off balance and Devereaux came back with a great right hand but it was this great perfect perm right hand and he was in a bad position so it was a perfect right hand from Devereaux's report and he was just out of balance at the time has Klitschko been the same fighter since Corey Sanders well, Two years now. Minnesota, Santa, well, it's very difficult to say. You just remember, for the most part of the career, the Klitschko brothers fought primarily in Germany in control type situations. Now they're over here with the big boys, like Linux. They are actually fighting and training over here in America. And as we've discussed, it's going to be more difficult. I mean, it's not where everything was controlled as it was in Germany. So they're going to have to battle their way back up to the top, the rough way here. Where does he go from here now? Well, I would like to see him, I really would like to see uh, uh, him fight again as soon as possible, possible in December. And uh, we would like to fight anyone, even if it's Deverell again, it does not matter. But I think he must fight, win or lose, he's got to be busy fighting. Will you be healed by December? Uh, yeah, let's see, I didn't see my face yet, so I have to check it out and also talk to the doctor, so let's see what's come up. The, but I would have to admit, I would like to come back in the ring as soon as possible. Against Deverell again? Yeah, I don't know feel better let's bring in Devero. you acquitted yourself here very well tonight you were able to knock Klitschko down here in that fourth round did you feel as though you were ahead when you went to the scorecards uh, I felt that I was ahead but I felt it was close uh, I really uh, agree with like something like 48 46 uh, because of knockdown uh, like uh, I guess as, as usual uh, we tried to uh, not necessarily wait it out but we tried to let him kind of shoot his low early in the fight so my fight is from the conditioning is from round five one to, to ten and that's what we we had planned all along based on what you'd seen against Brewster precisely uh, so therefore you know everything was going uh, scheduled to plan uh, my coach wanted me to throw a little bit more punches during that 
during the, during the first five rounds, though. However, but we did you know get a, a good shot. He was a little bit off balance, but it was a punch that, that knocked him down. So we felt that we should have uh, maybe won that round at least 10, 10, 8, 10, 7, possibly 10, 7. Tell us your version of what happened at the end of the fifth round here with the headbutt as we take a look at it. I think uh, it was 10 seconds left or something like that. We heard it hit, uh, the guy hit the mat, and so we're trying to uh, uh, slide in with the uh, the one two. Uh, Jay Nady kept warning uh, Vladimir a number of times, and I think around two, around three, about holding. And I was surprised he didn't take a point. He warned him maybe like three or four times, you know, you know, right uh, in, in a row. So I think our heads maybe hit. Uh, you know, it was so. You know, it was. Um, Excitement in there, so I, I'm not sure. I know that maybe you know it was a punch or w whatever, but uh, looks like it was just you know, it was a headbutt or whatever, or a slightly clash of heads, you know, incidental. And um, we, uh, you know, this is this. Is